Webster defines a journey as traveling from one place to another. But in Journey to the Overland, you'll do a lot more than just travel. From the moment your character leaves his hometown, you'll begin to experience the encounters and adventures that could only take place in Journey to the Overland. Whether you're new to fantasy gaming or an old role-playing veteran, you'll feel right at home, yet uncomfortably new to the world of Overland. Far more than a board game, but not quite role-playing, Journey to the Overland combines the best elements of each. Set in a world where sorcery, magic, and might are the greatest powers, and surviving is the only law, Journey to the Overland gives you what the other games won't a chance to tackle it all alone. With its unique encounter cards, various scenarios, and extensive use of non-playing characters, you have everything you need to enjoy hours of travels and adventures. But the only way to truly appreciate the commitment and dedication that went into this game is to grab your favorite figure, grab the dice, and start playing. Welcome to a way of gaming you will never leave, because once you begin it, there's no returning from it a journey to the Overland. Previously on Journey to the Overland. Responding to a decree of the King to return home and register for war, Maverick is once more pursued by his unknown assassin. However, armed with a formidable broadsword, Maverick fights her off and continues to make his way home in obedience to the king. His respite from the deadly assassin was short-lived, as no sooner has the king's decree ended than once again he encounters his assassin. But the assassin is not all Maverick has to deal with, as once again harsh weather like volcanoes and earthquakes take their toll on him. Tested but wounded, Maverick gradually begins to gain the vital experience he needs to survive in the Overland. Experience that finally leads him to defeating his dreaded nemesis, the female assassin. Armed with new weapons and new equipment taken from the dead assassin in a bag of gold, Maverick makes for the town of Zafton to begin a new life and new adventures. Hey, welcome to uh, another episode of Journey to the Overline, everybody. So, I'm not sure how long this episode's going to be. I just kind of started playing on the spur of the moment. I'm sitting up late at night. Didn't really have nothing else to do, so I thought I'd break the game out. Uh, now, what the last time we left Maverick, uh, which might have, which you might have already heard in the uh, the recap, the last time we left Maverick, he had just entered the town of Zafton. He was pretty badly wounded, but he had just recovered about a hundred gold pieces off of the assassin that had been stalking him the better part of two months. So having killed the assassin, taken her gold, her crossbow, he basically has spent the last two, I think three weeks in Zafton healing up. And really, it's went through most, he spent most of his gold on lodging and on food. So, his gold reserves are pretty depleted. The good news is, he's actually fairly healed. And so, that's why I decided to bring this, uh, to, to start this episode and kind of show you where I'm picking up from. So, he's got 20 gold pieces left, 20 silver pieces, and that's eight, uh, eight provisions of food now he's his xps has have also went up like i indicated at the end of the last game he was due uh to probably bump up his xps so he's now a level two character he now has fifteen thousand xps to spend which i'm gonna go through and we're gonna see what skill we're gonna buy him and how that works his endurance is actually up to 80 now 
which is really good. I mean, that's the highest it's been probably since the first or second day after he left his hometown. So I'm about to start week uh, 19. So I haven't pulled the event card for the week. We're going to do that. And then after that, I'm going to kind of go through. Uh, let's first pick him out a new skill. And then we'll buy him some provisions. And then decide what he's going to do this week. Okay, first let's take a look at the event card for this week. This is actually a really cool event card. It's called The Lost Village. News is spreading about the discovery of a lost village. All characters have a 40% chance of locating it in any hex they travel in. So basically, if you travel this week, whenever you move through a hex, you roll your dice. And it says here, after your encounter... So basically, you would resolve your encounter. Then when you do your travel, you roll your dice. If you roll 40 or less, you found this lost village. And from that point on, you can return to that hex. And basically, you can do any town activities in this village except seeking an audience with the mayor. So that means you can buy lodging, you can buy supplies, whatever. So this is actually a pretty good uh, card. Now, only one village can be found this week. So if there's more than one character traveling, whoever finds it first, that's the village. But uh, this is actually a real good card. In my situation, I would definitely prefer to maybe find it somewhere around here. Because there's such a big gap between Zafton and Wood Dam, which is basically up there. So to have a village here or there would be beautiful, but uh, we'll see. I mean, that's assuming we find it. So I just wanted to show you that. Now we're going to look at uh, his skills. Now you may remember the main skill I wanted to purchase was warrior skill. Uh, and what I like about warrior skill is, first of all, it allows you to lead troops. Secondly, uh, as far as with warrior skill, it allows you to, now let me see, you always strike first in combat and less surprised. And you may strike two opponents in one turn, but cannot strike one opponent twice in one turn. So basically, if you're double teamed, you can actually strike both of them. The problem is, in order to get warrior skill, you have to have killed at least 10 humans. I, I have not killed 10 humans. In fact, I don't think I have any kills. Well, no, I think I have one kill from the assassin. Which should be on here somewhere. Men killed. Actually, that should be one. Because I did kill that assassin. So, but that's it. I don't, I don't, I haven't killed enough, hardly enough. So the next skill I think I'm going to go for, and this actually costs more than the warrior skill. This is actually 15,000, which I do have because I didn't spend my initial five. And this is the fighter skill. This actually is a better skill and it's a beauty. So first of all, as a fighter, you have to have a 60% or higher ability and endurance, which I have an endurance of 80 and ability of 80. So I can definitely be a fighter. Okay, so basically they're not going to let real weak or unskilled people get fighter skill. But if you have that, you receive a plus 10 modifier to your ability and endurance scores when you obtain fighter skill. So basically for Maverick, this guy's... His ability score will go to 90. His endurance will go to 98. Which, I mean, that's going to be huge for him. I mean, that, that's almost maxed out on those. But in addition, I receive a plus 10 modifier in combat when fighting any sword. So basically, I will have like almost no chance of missing when I attack with my swords now. Because I'll be at a 90. Whatever the benefit the sword gives me, whatever the benefit my fighter skill will give me another plus 10. Now, that can change because as you get wounded or whatever, you can suffer modifiers normally. But it says right here, fighters do not suffer combat negative combat modifiers for terrain, weather, or wounds. 
So basically, as a fighter, if you have a high enough endurance and ability, you will basically almost always hit. Okay? And that, that's pretty powerful. I mean, you almost have to roll double zeros to not hit somebody. If you have a friggin', you know, if your modifiers are taking you over 100, the only way you can miss is if you roll 100, you know, which is technically always a miss. But, so that's definitely, plus the, sh the fighter can strike up to two opponents at once in any round of combat. Now, you remember the the warrior could strike two opponents, but he could not make two strikes on the same opponent. This one says you can strike up to two opponents at once in any round of combat. Plus, you do an additional minus five damage to an opponent whenever they are fighting alone. So, if you're one-on-one -on -one with a guy, you do even more damage to him. So, I mean, this is like the ultimate, you know, combat skill is to obtain fighter skill. And this is exactly what I want. It also says you can use any weapon in combat even if not trained to use it. There's certain weapons like assassins have weapons which typically you cannot use as a regular person, only an assassin. But the fighter says he can use any weapon. So if he was to find an assassin's garret or sap, a fighter could use that. So I mean, this is a this is a huge, this is a huge bonus to pick up for fifteen thousand uh, XP. And I mean, uh, oh wait, it even says here you can strike two opponents in one round of combat. Or one opponent twice. Wow. 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 So, that's this is definitely going to change my character and the way I play him going forward. Now. There's a huge caveat to everything I just told you, right? Because I'm sure a lot of you might say, well, that the game is broken. You know, your game is broken. No, the game is not broken. Because the huge caveat to actually being able to use any skill, if you look up the skill section, is prior to using the skill, you have to pass a skill check. Which means if I'm entering a combat and I want to use my fighter skill in that combat, I have to pass a skill check. If I don't pass that skill check, that my fighter skills will not be used. I will not be able to use them in that combat, right? And it also depends on what what you roll for your for your fighter skill. So this is going to be a huge roll. I mean, if I get a nice result and I'm going to use the ten as my uh, the black is my 10 die. If I get a huge result, then I should be in pretty good shape to always have this available. Who 62. Now, that does get modified by the combat, I mean, by the, the uh, starting characteristics modifier row. So let's see what 62 gets modified to. Because I think these do get modified. I'll double check that. But, uh, so it says here, if you roll a 62, you add five, which would give me 67. That would be nice. I mean, it's not guaranteed, but it would be nice. But let me double check that. Okay, so here's another good chance to explain a rule to you. Uh, now this says with skills, and this is on page... 38 Several skills that will improve characters are available to that character for a listed amount of experience points XP's after purchasing a skill players roll Percentile dice using the modifiers for characters generation. So you do add the modifier So my 62 that I wrote will go to a 67 now Here's another important thing in order to advance in levels in an acquired skill, characters must use the skill at least 20 times. For every 20 times, the character advances one level up to level 5. Players add plus 2 to the skill percent score of their character. So basically, you can improve your ability with a skill 
eventually by plus up to plus 10 points. So if I was to become a level five fighter, I would go from 67 to 77 percent with that skill. And the maximum you could get is 99. But what happens is every time you use it successfully, you would mark that. And when you get 20 successful uses of it, then you would go up to the next level. Right. So because, of course, you can't use a skill if you don't make a successful skill check. But so if I were to have 20 combats or 20 situations where I use my fighter skill, I'd go to level two and I get a plus two immediately to my skill score from 67 to 69 percent. So make sure you notice that rule because it is important when you want to start acquiring skills. OK, so I'm going to show you how I marked this on my record sheet. The skill I acquired is fighter skill. I'm level one. I have a score of 67 percent. The modifiers or the abilities of the skill, I get plus 10 to my endurance and ability, and that's permanent. You don't have to always roll for that. That's just permanent once you get the skill. I get plus 10 when I'm using a sword. I do plus 5 damage if I'm fighting somebody by their self. And I can either strike one person twice, or I can strike two people at the same time in a round of combat. And so I have to pay for that. Which means I take the 15,000 XP's, they are going to go away. Because that cost me everything I had left. That extra 5,000 XP's made a big difference. Because if I had already spent it and only had 10, I couldn't have got fighter skill. I would have had to get the warrior skill, which I didn't even, I don't, I'm not even qualified to be a warrior yet. So... That's the skill I picked up, and I'm pretty excited about being able to use it. We're going to see how that works out. Uh, I do have to change my ability is now 90 instead of 80. And my endurance is now 98 instead of 88. So that's huge. That's huge. Believe you me, that extra 10 makes a huge difference on both of those. Oh yeah, plus I suffer no modifiers for terrain, weather. So like if you draw those weather cards that say minus 10 from your ability in combat, when you have fighter skill, you ignore all that. You don't minus anything. I mean, that's if your fighter skill is working. And one thing you got to be careful about is... You know, you might pick a fight with somebody assuming, oh, well, my fighter skill, I can take this guy out quick. And then your your fighter skill fails you, right? You come, to, you go to go into the combat and all of a sudden you realize your fighter skills aren't there for you. You know, you're having an off day. So it's kind of a dicey proposition. I mean, you're not, you don't want to go around starting fights with people just because you have fighter skill. Because, you know, if you roll a, a 70, your fighter skill is not going to be available that day. And now you're just fighting like a regular person. Meaning you're going to have to suffer the modifiers and everything else. But at the same time, you know, say you're badly wounded and you go into a combat skill and your fighter skill kicks in. I mean, you could, you could own the day very quickly. So that's what makes it interesting in this game. Is that your your skills are there for you, but they're not automatic. That you so you're not a superhero, you know, because your skills can't fail you. Okay, so I wanted to look at buying some supplies and stocking up on some stuff. Unfortunately, a hundred gold does not go very far. I mean, by the time I paid for my lodging and my food, uh, and that was it. I I've only got twenty gold left. I mean, I had to rest for almost three weeks. Just to heal up to, to 80. So I've got 20 gold and 20 silver. Now I wanted to buy. I wanted to buy a. Some armor. Okay because it always pays to get armor. Because you don't have wounds coming directly off your endurance. Even, even light armor is better than no armor. The problem is the cheapest armor is cloth of fur. Which only absorbs three points, maximum of twelve. I mean, so that's that's pretty much nothing. But it costs twenty gold for that. I don't have that. 
Leather is decent. You know, it takes five off up to 25. 40 gold. So I don't have enough for either one of those. I mean, that's I'm going to spend every dime I have on this cheap cloth armor. Um, so then I said, well, maybe I'll buy some bolts for the crossbow I took off of the, off of the uh, assassin. Yeah, right. Quarrels for five quarrels cost 50 gold pieces. They only do minus five damage each. But they cost 50 gold pieces. So basically to do 25 points of wounds with somebody with a crossbow costs you 50 gold. So I don't have that. So then I said, well, maybe I'll buy me a shield. Well, you know, you can always use a shield if you're in a defensive mode. The cheapest shield, let's see, the small round shield, plus 10 to your defense has a pretty high break which means anytime you you get attacked with your shield there's a percent chance that the shield will break and this means basically there's a 20 percent chance that this shield could break every time it's hit and i don't know whether you roll for that or the other person rolls for it but uh uh Either way, it, it will break when that occurs. So it says if a character striking it lands a blow with the result. So basically, if your per person, when they attack you, roll a 0, 1 through 20 as part of their attack, your shield breaks. Even if they don't hit you, even if the strike is unsuccessful, the shield breaks. Uh, that's 20 gold. So the best shield is obviously the tower shield, which only has a 5% chance of breaking, or a kite shield, which only has an 8% chance of breaking. So the kite shield is not too bad at 30 gold. I just don't have 30 gold. The small round buckler round shield, oh, that's the one I just looked at. The buckler, it's a huge modifier. It's not too heavy. You know, an average break score, 30 gold. But I won't be getting the shield. Now, I could pick up another weapon, which could be the dagger. The dagger is five gold. It only does five damage. But the nice thing about a dagger is you can fight with two hands, two weapons at once when you're using a dagger. So, meaning as a fighter, I could get in a fight. Plus, I think daggers can be used in fist fights too, which is huge. But, so, with the dagger... As a fighter, if I'm getting two strikes on one opponent and I have a broadsword that does 15, a dagger that does 5, I would basically be able to strike once, roll once for my broadsword, once for my dagger. So that would be 20 if I hit. Then on my next strike, do the same thing. So I could possibly put 40 points of damage on a character, you know, in one round of combat with that combo. Now that would cost me five gold, which which is reasonable. That leaves me another fifteen gold, you know, to to use on supplies. So I think I am gonna get the dagger. Okay, so as you can now see, I have bought my dog back, and I'm gonna call it Tinder still. Even though I know Tinder was lost in a uh, tornado, uh, I'm just going to assume he was found somewhere around Zafton. So I bought him back. Uh, that sent me back 33 silver pieces, which is about 10 gold pieces. So I only had about 10 left. And then I also bought a... This is some other stuff I was thinking about. I didn't have enough for any of this. 250 for a horse another a 26 for another dog heavy coat high boots didn't have enough for either of those so i just bought the lantern you know the lantern comes up in a lot of the weather cars you know you can't travel without it through fog or other conditions so i got the lantern uh and that pretty much that pretty much cleaned me out so I basically have, I've kept five gold for an emergency, you know, in case I get chased in a town, you know, that's at least 15 silver. I got one silver left over and I got food for eight days. 
but I actually feel pretty good. This is the best position I've been in since the game started. And I mean, basically, it has taken me five months of gameplay to get this character to this position. Five months. So, you know, if you're playing this game and you're saying, oh, this game is too hard, I die every turn, you know, I die every event, you're pushing it too fast. You know, you just got to slow your roll because the game will reward you if you play the game like real life, right? If you play it like real life. If you want to run out here and act like it's a video game, yeah, you're probably going to get killed off. Everything is going to kill you. But if you play it like real life and do things smartly and wisely and you really, really think about, you know, things before you... You know, you push your character into that next situation, the game will reward you eventually. So even though I haven't done a lot of hacking and slashing in this game, I've survived. And just surviving <clears throat> after five months, I finally earned enough experience, obviously, from living, to get fighter skill from my character. You know, I finally had an encounter where I defeated somebody. I acquired a decent amount of gold. And now I'm actually in a position to actually go out here and kind of dictate from this point on what I am or I'm not going to do. Now, I probably couldn't defeat any trolls or, you know, raiding parties or knights. You know, certainly I probably could not defeat any of them, even right now. Uh... You know, maybe with my fighter skill active, I could defeat a knight. Uh, but knights wear a lot of armor, right? They wear a lot of armor, and most of them have lances that do a lot of damage. So, you know, and knights have some abilities of their own. Uh, most knights are also fighters. So you got to be careful because if you pull a knight card and you think you're going to take him down because you're a fighter or warrior, you better read that card carefully. Because any skills that it says they have in addition to being a knight, you have to use those for that character in that combat. Just like that character would. So don't let your hubris take you and you start picking fights you can't win. Because most knights, even if you try to get away from them, you're not going to outrun them because they're mounted. You know, and then they get that attack when you leave. Then they close on you. The next day, when you try to evade again, they're going to get another attack. And anytime they get adjacent to you, they can resume the combat. So you're pretty much screwed, right? So you got to be very careful and don't get ahead of yourself. But I think he's in a good position. So now I'm going to decide, you know, what I'm going to do for the day. And I may only play one daily action out. I mean, this video's kind of went long. This was the weather I drew. So we have to eat one additional wound meal now you see where it says characters minus 10 from their agility score for the day any ca characters in desert terrain suffer minus two wounds now i would minus 10 from my agility score unless it's in combat right because being a fighter doesn't make me immune to to all modifiers it only makes me immune to them during a combat if i pass that fighter skill so that's an important distinction to make Meaning if I go hunting, I would still have a minus 10 for my agility because my fighter skill only applies in combat. So make sure you understand that distinction. Uh, so let me decide about my daily action. Maybe we'll play that out because I think I want to try to find this lost village. Okay. As much as I wanted to travel today and look for the village, I thought today would be a good chance to show you guys uh, how the news and information goes. And now, the last time I wrote on this was back when I first started out, and I got some event about somebody with a horse or something, not too far away. But I was too, I, you know, I was too weak to even go out there and do that. So let's see what we can find out in town since we are in Zafton through news and information. Now I'm going to have to pay for lodging, which is going to use up the last of my gold. But heck, let's see what's going on. Maybe we can find something to do when we head out. So let's look at what it says here. 
Your characters travel about the town or castle seeking news and information. You spend the day seeking. You have to pay a 10 silver piece information fee. I don't even know if I have 10 silver pieces. Hold on. Because I might not be able to do this. I have... Crap. Five gold. That would be 15 silver. Plus the one I got is 16. I'd need 10 for lodging or else I'd get robbed. And then I'd have to pay 10 for that. So I don't even have enough to do that unless I sold something, which I'm not going to do. So, unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to show you guys any news and information. Let's just get out of town. So, this is Maverick here. It's pretty much open land wherever I go, which I think it's 70% or 75% chance of an encounter. So, I rode a 51 you can see that so i wrote a 51 which is definitely going to be an encounter let me see which way i'm heading just so we keep this fair i'm going to try to go up this way so if i do find this lost village it might be right outside of zafton which wouldn't help but let's see what the encounter is oh this doesn't look too bad a jeweler he's adjacent this jeweler has some discount jewels he's willing to sell. These are a 500 gold ruby bracelet for only 400 gold. I ain't got that kind of money. If you have merchant skill. Yeah, see, this is for merchants dealing with each other. A negative result and he will leave. He will not attack nor will he join your party. So, I don't even need to roll on the table. That's basically saying you could roll on the table a positive result on the NPC reaction table if you were a merchant and he'd subtract another 50 gold from the prices. But since it says here he would just leave, but he wouldn't join my party or anything, I'm just going to leave him on his way. I don't, I don't really have any need to be dealing with a merchant. That was interesting, though. All right, so this hex, let's see if we find the... Uh, Lost Village in there, 40% chance. Ho ho! So it is, there is a Lost Village there, which kind of sucks. Because it's right outside of Zafton. So I guess whoever built it, built it outside the town. That doesn't really help me, but I will mark that in my uh, record sheet. Because maybe if I'm short of getting into Zafton, I can stop at the Lost Village. Yeah, that really wasn't good. I wanted it to be a little bit further out, maybe two or three days out. It would have been a little more significant. But, uh, let me put that. Should I put this in areas or places visited? Or should I put it in, should I put it in, uh, do I have a thing for towns? Mounts, property, or hexes owned? Uh, personal or rented homes. I don't have any personal or rented homes. So let me just do it like this. Lost Village. And now I'll put the hex number. 1423. Now I may put a counter or a marker there later. Just to... uh. Just to remind myself if I'm close to getting out or away. But basically from there I can go to. Now another thing I discovered. Now that I'm outside of the town. Is. I remember I was having a lot of trouble hunting. Because his agility score is so low. Speaking of which it's going to be even lower today. So I probably won't go hunting. Now that I think about it. But. Make sure you go to the terrain effects table, you know, before you start, you start the game. And if you're not familiar with the terrain effects, uh, you know, check it every so often. Because this is what I found out at the end of the last game. Characters hunting at plus 10 to their sketch catch scores while in open land. So normally your catch scores, you roll your dice and you add... You add it to your agility or what your catch score is like your agility plus any weapons or whatever you have. 
but you are actually allowed to add 10 if you are hunting in open land. So all of those hunts, I actually had a higher percent chance. And now with my dog, I would get to add that. So, you know, I'm still not going to be a great or expert hunter, but that will make a big difference, you know, in being able to catch things. Because obviously, you know, my, my problem was catching animals, not killing them. Okay, so I drew the next day's weather card, and it says all characters healing healed three additional wounds. So I'm going to take advantage of that and get some rest in the day because I, I want to get my endurance as high as I can. Oh my goodness. So it's day three, week 19, and once again I draw this stupid earthquake card. Well, that's why I tell you, you know, you might seriously want to think about uh, <laughs> curating your deck of weather cards. So all my animals are lost, which means I lose my dog again, which I just got back. I have to make this stupid agility check. If I fail this, you know, I'm stuck. I get to 20 friggin' wounds again. I hate that card. And I felt my agility check again. Oh my goodness. So I'm going to take the 20 wounds. Oh, I'm going to be stuck in this hex for three days. This is ridiculous. These earthquakes are terrible. Yeah, I mean, there's nothing I can do. There's nothing I can do. Okay, three days have elapsed. I've eaten my food. I've rested inside this crater I fell into. And finally on day six, I emerge, prepare to move along, and here's today's weather. A hard <laughs> blizzard. So you have to minus one from your movement rate. No air travel is possible. Minus 10 from your ability in combat. But uh, I'm running low on food. I don't have to worry about this effect in my combat because I am a uh, fighter. If I pass my fighter check, obviously. So I am going to try to travel in the blizzard. Uh... So we'll see. I mean, it may affect if I encounter anybody, but I need to find somebody and try to get some more gold or some money for some food. So I'm not just going to sit here. So I do have to check for an encounter. I no longer have my dog again, which really pisses me off. Now, technically, I could actually go right back here in this lost village. And I could actually buy my... Uh, I could actually buy my dog there without having to go all the way back to Zafton. But uh, if I do that, I'm assuming I'd have to pay for lodging again. So, but let me just roll and see if I have an encounter. Because either way, if I travel, I had to check for that. So I do have an encounter. Which way am I going? Am I going back to the village to rebuy my dog? Or am I just going to head on up through here? Yeah, and I don't think that makes much sense. I need that dog. I don't have enough money to buy the dog, though. And I don't have enough money to pay for lodging. So, I'll, I'll go this way. I can only move one hex anyway. So, I can only move one hex anyway. Now, I could actually go in this hex without going into the village. Because unlike a town... The village is here, but I don't have to go into the village. So, that's an option. And then I could actually go in the village the next day. I mean, I'd still have to roll for an encounter, but I'd already be there. You know, even if there were the movement uh, was not allowed that day, because I'm, I'm already technically right by it. So, but if I go here... That would allow me to get across the desert the next day without, even if the weather's bad, without possibly getting stuck in the desert. 
which I don't want to do. You know, I don't want to have to spend the night in the desert. So this is where I will go. But before I check for my movement, let's check for this encounter. Oh, an iron smith? This valiant knight. Oh, well, that's obviously not his card because he's not a valiant knight. So that's a misprint. I think I, I have a, something in the errata for that card. I think, I don't know if this is the old deck that I'm using. Because that should not have come up like that. I think that was corrected. Uh, if not, check the errata. I'm just going to pull another card. I mean, I could go check the errata and see what the actual encounter is. But here's the other card. I got the Hive Lord. Or the keeper of the sex because of his ability to control insects. If he attacks in combat every other round, he will sound an insect alert. When he does, there is a 78% chance it will respond to his call and attack his opponent. 210 and add the result for the number of wow. Wow. Is in addition to his own attack. If he joins you, he can also use this. So this guy is some kind of insect lord. So basically, I have to make an NPC reaction check. He has no friggin' gold. He is level two. But basically, there, I'd have no... I'd get nothing out of fighting this dude. And that insect attack, you know, that could cause me problems even with my fighter skill. So, let's make this roto and see if I encounter him. I mean, if, I, if he's friendly or not. 74. What is that on the NPC reaction table? I don't think I don't think I'm gonna have to fight him today. Let's see here. NPC reaction table. NPC reaction table. Daily actions. XP expand. So I'm, I'm looking through my errata printout. In case you're wondering, this is on Cheatography. So I'm trying to find the NPC reaction table in all of these tables. Alright, so here it is. And I wrote a 72. So 53 to 60. NPC reaction table. 31 to 62. Oh, 63. So that should actually be 63 to... Wait, 31 to 62. So this should be 63 to 80. That's not 60. That's supposed to be an 80. So it's in this category. NPC is cooperative. They will help you but will not follow you or do any life-threatening actions for you. They have skills. However, they will use them for you provided they are paid. Or you meet any other requirements indicated on the card. It says, but they will not follow you. Which means the guy is willing to help me, but he's not going to follow me. Meaning he won't join. It's like, they only join you if it says, we'll join your party. Then that means they will join you. Uh, so... Yeah, I don't really know what kind of help I could get from them. Normally what that means, though, by they will help you or cooperative, meaning if they have something to sell, they'll sell it to you. You know, if they have a skill that, that you can pay them to use for you, they'll use it for you. So just that's just kind of give you a guideline on interpreting that. But in this case, uh, that's not going to really come into play for me. I'm glad I don't have to fight the guy. So I will move ahead. So I can maybe get across the desert next turn. Okay, so we're heading into the next day. Now I'm going to show you kind of the logic and what I did the other day. Is This is the weather for the day, which is heat. So I have to eat an additional meal. I've only got one meal left. So I'm obviously going to have to hunt to do that. Unless I find somebody to sell me some food. Or unless I go back to this town, which I could actually get into the village today. Uh, 
I don't know if I have enough money to pay for lodging though because I have to treat it like a regular town. I've got five gold, which would be 15 silver. So I could pay for another day of lodging or I could just buy food and then risk getting my weapons and my crossbow stolen, which I'm not gonna do. That's not happening. So I'm not, I can't turn back that way. Uh, minus 10 from your agility score for the day. So it means even if I hunt today, I'm gonna have even a less chance of catching anything. So I figure I'm gonna wind up dealing with some starvation for a while. I just, unless I find some gold or some food. But since the next terrain I'm entering is desert terrain, obviously, I only have a 30% chance of an encounter. Now, if I had not moved in there and I had stayed here, then the next terrain I'd be entering would be open land which is like a 75% chance of an encounter. But if you look at the encounter table here, desert, it's only 30%. Uh, open land, 75. So pretty much I can probably get through here without any encounter. And if I move two, that will get me across the desert and I won't have to end the day there. At least I hope it will. This is actually mostly desert so if I camp in the desert I'm going to suffer minus two wounds if I don't eat an additional meal I'm going to suffer more wounds so I could wind up before the day is out taking what four wounds even if I eat uh this one I'd probably roll because there's a it's 50 50 desert 50 50 open land this one is probably mostly open land but then you're you're kind of getting forced into the the mountain that pass here uh which is also by the dragon's home or i could just kind of wind up this way but then i'm looking at going into the swamp well that's kind of tepid or terrifying uh so i'm gonna roll to see if i have an encounter in the desert first of all so I don't. I wrote a 62. So that's definitely not an encounter. I can definitely get through the desert. Uh, well, I have no choice. So I'm going to go one, two. Since that's, I'd say that's about 80% desert, I'm going to make a roll. So if it's 80 or less, I'm in the desert portion. If it's uh, above 80, I'm in the open land portion. So I'm in the desert portion. So I don't have an extra food. I am in the desert. So I'm going to take two wounds for heat and another two wounds for not having extra food. So that'll put me down, my endurance down to 71. Just scary. I mean, even, even after all of this, you know, I'm still on the brink, you know, of just being pretty badly wounded. But that's the end of that day. Okay, so I spoke a little too soon about that's the end of that day. So when you go to the terrain effects, if you're camping in desert, this is what you have to deal with. You can only travel two hexes per day unless you're riding on camels. Other animals cannot be rode through the desert. You have to wear a heavy coat. I don't have a heavy coat. So there's a 10% chance I could get sunburn. So let's roll for that. No sunburn, although I came friggin' close. Uh, and that's in the new sickness and disease table, which somehow got omitted, but I did put it up on cheatography. I don't know if I printed it yet, but you can go there and get that. Of what happens with sunburn characters must also eat twice now i didn't eat twice the normal mo uh amount of food it says you can't hunt i don't have it i'm not in the oasis hex if you do not eat the double meal requirement you have an 80 percent chance of suffering from malnutrition which is different than starvation so 80 percent chance of that oh. So I do suffer from malnutrition. So now I have to go find this sickness and disease table. 
So let me come back. Okay. Just when you thought your life was heading in the right direction, life kicks you in the butt. So apparently malnutrition causes a minus three to your ability score for every day that you don't eat the double meals while you're in the desert. So I had one day that I didn't eat it. So my ability goes from 90 to 87. Now in order to heal this, you have to eat these missed meals, right? So, but there's a catch. The, the food you eat to heal it must be fresh caught hunted food. So basically, I need one day of hunted food to cure this. Otherwise, just eating food that I bought will not cure my malnutrition. Which means now I have to go try to hunt and get the food that I need to cure that. Or else that's going to be with me permanently. Unless I can find somebody else who's good at hunting. Okay, so with that, uh, we started another week. I've got several things out that I did, which I'll show you real quick, just to kind of move this along. First of all, this is the event for this week. There's a famine. I think most of you should have seen this by now, but basically the price of food is doubled. Uh, but you can get free food and I think free lodging at the King's Castle. It doesn't say free lodging, but you can get free food. I don't really need that right now. Uh, this is the daily weather, weather. There's basically mud puddles. So if you do get into combat, there's a chance of slipping. And then minus ones from your movement rate. I'm getting the heck out of the desert, which means I'm going to be entering this piece of open land here. So I rode for my encounter. I rode a 16. So I do have an encounter. And then that catches you guys up, and here we go. Ha! Huh, is this the same assassin I did? This is a different one. You learned that a member of your party... I don't have a member of my party. So, do not roll for NPC combat. So, this doesn't apply to me because I'm not traveling with anyone. But basically what this means is if you had somebody with you, you learn out that they're an assassin. I don't know why my character keeps attracting assassins. It's something, maybe they know something about him and his future. But anyway, I'll go there. So that gets me out of the friggin' desert. I don't have any food. I could try to go hunting. Uh... I wish I had my dog with me. I probably won't get injured. So, yeah, let me do the hunt. Wow. So, I, uh, I went hunting last night. And I ran into a bear. Was unable to catch it. But fortunately, I wasn't wounded in the hunt. So if you get hunted trying to catch a bear, that's 40 wounds right there. So basically, this is the next day. And it's fog. So you have a chance of getting lost unless you have a lantern. I do have a lantern, so thank goodness that won't apply to me. I'm going in the forest, so I did roll for an encounter, which there's a 45% chance. I rolled 39. So I did have an encounter. And look what I got. <laughs> I finally ran into a healer. So now I have to see if I can convince her to join my party. She's three hexes away. It says no matter what, she will not attack. She will simply leave. But if she joins me, she will automatically heal any wounded member in your party. She has 64% healing skill. She's got bottles of healing potion. And a little staff. Isn't she cute? I think I'm in love. Please let this woman join me. I don't know if I have anything to help this role, but please let her join me. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. You gotta be kidding me. Oh my goodness. Oh 
Oh my goodness. Please tell me that says I can re-roll this. Oh my goodness. I needed this so bad. Oh. Oh. Come on. <laughs> Don't do this to me. Don't do this to me. Now it says normally they're hostile. They will attack and fight for four rounds of combat. Uh, but it says with her, she won't attack. She will simply leave. Oh, man. Now, you know, if I wanted to be a villain, I could actually attack her and knock her unconscious and take her healing potions but of course that would be stealing and what basically what that would mean is after that any time after that that i entered a uh, town there'd be a percent chance i would run into the constables the constables would then attack me if they win the attack combat they would put me on trial and there is a procedure for going on trial in this game, and it is not in your favor. <laughs> but I think I'm going to call it a night there. I do get to make my movement, so that puts me at 1, 2. So I am close to Wood Dam. Still wounded. Still hungry. Oh, man. That was, that was the card I've been waiting for since I've been playing this game. If I could have got her to join my party, wow, that would have, that we would have been rocking and we would have been rolling. But as it is, you know, I'm stuck in the middle of the forest. I'll probably make it to Wood Dam. You know, if I sell this lantern and a few other things, I can get some lodging and get some food in me. Uh, I don't think I'm going to hunt tonight. I don't really see the point. Of hunting in the forest. Uh, I definitely need to go buy me a spear and a dog now. Because you know my ability score is going to be less than what it could be. Until I, until I get some fresh food. Or somebody that knows how to hunt. See I should have hired some more help before I left Zafton. But yeah I guess, I, I guess I'll call it a night. All right, take care, everybody. My name is Maverick. I'm from the town of Milestep, and I live in the Overland. The Overland is a dangerous place. You never know what you will run into, and you never know what you will find. When at all possible, never, ever travel alone. And when all else fails, it's better to run and live to fight another day. And in the end, if you have faith, Hope will light your way.